the Prince Urak was R and D'd on a Rav Four that was a non-adventure TRD model. So the more common one, I guess you could say, which utilize a different type of roof rack system. I'll post a comparison on the screen right now. As you can see, they're a little different. Hopefully they are still mounted into the roof the same way. We won't know that until I start the takedown of the, of the adventure rack. What is up everybody? This is Danny Rocksteady. Thank you for joining me on my channel and checking out another video. Today is install day. Before we get started on any of that stuff, we need to go ahead and take down this roof rack. I will check back in with you guys in a second. I figured I'd go ahead and install this first so that way I can get a couple shots of the ladder with the current rack system. So let's uh, go ahead and open these up and check it out and we'll go ahead and get these installed. Okay, so this here is the top bracket. It is going to be slid along the top of the hatch lid. So it's going to be pushed all the way to where the lip is right there. It took a little bit of persuading. I lost a little, a uh, very fine layer of paint on mine, but I was able to get it on and slide it in. As you can see, it slides in that way. I'm sure it doesn't help that my car is dirty when I was doing it. So you'll slide it here and then you'll put the, the set screws back in there and that'll clamp it to the uh, lid up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw the ladder on. Pretty rock solid now that it's on there. Let's tighten the set screws. The ladder, I decided to offset it just to the left of the license plate because living in California, I'm sure there's a law against some type of obstruction of view of the plate and I'm sure this could even be sketched, but then again, I roll around with tinted front windows. What is up everyone? Welcome back. This is day two of the install. Yesterday didn't quite go quite as planned. I got the uh, the ladder installed as you can see back there. However, the Prince rack didn't go anywhere near as planned. Uh, after a couple hours of tinkering, I realized that there's not a way to remove the Adventure and TRD roof rails from the ceiling without dropping the headliner. And so, as you can see, Already started doing a little bit of that, starting to take stuff off, kind of uh, doing a little exploring last night, but I ran out of light. So I had to, uh, so I went ahead and called it a night. I'm on my way to the hardware store now to pick up trim removal tools so that I can pop off all of the plastics around here and drop this headliner so that we can get this rail uh, removed and then the new Prince rack installed. This is the tool kit that I picked up. It's just a bunch of wedges and things like that so that we can remove the trim pieces pretty easily without jacking up the paint or the plastics too much. Another thing that might be handy is some hose grip pliers. You can see this. Got this at Harbor Freight as well. 
This is good for some of the deeper clips, especially like in the A-pillar and things like that. I'll go ahead and show you these uh, in a second and how these are helpful. If you don't have a pair of these, some needle nose pliers work still. And then also having, just being able to reach, creating room and reaching your fingers in there will work as well. And then with back to this, I mean, you don't even really need this. I've done this type of stuff uh, with just a screwdriver, putting tape on the tip so that it doesn't uh, mar up anything and my fingers. So this is an optional piece. It's just, I went ahead and spent, I think this was like $10 so that I can make sure not to uh, mess up the interior too much. Here's the driver's side A-pillar cover has been removed. Here's the cover itself. Great thing those hose pliers are for are removing these clips in here. Uh, when I was messing with this yesterday trying to remove it, I pulled it and um, how you, how I've typically pulled them before, just pulled straight out. Um, they, Toyota uses this interesting new type of clip where I assume it's because of the airbag and you, they don't want it, the uh, A-pillar cover to hit you in the face or anything like that when the airbags deploy, but as you can see it's kind of got like a tail and makes it hard to push back in. So when you pull it, this actually comes up and the, this is what hooks up in here and so this is still stuck in the A-pillar and so you have a couple inches worth of tail holding the, the cover on. And so those hose clamps are great, so if you see these... Uh, tips right here if you press on these that's how you uh, release them from the a pillar so you can pop it off and then push this back into here and then be able to pop it back in when I do the uh, passenger side I'll make sure I show you that in a little bit more detail next step that we're about to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and remove this overhead console and I grabbed one of the tools to pop these off I removed these before to do the LED upgrades Basically what you'll find in here is there's like a rubber grommet on on the four corners and You'll have to pop them straight down and the whole thing will remove. You'll also have to remove the the sunscreens uh, These are pretty simple You'll pop this off and then you'll see on this side that there are torque screws in there that you have to remove And then that'll come straight out The way you remove these is you do a twist so clockwise it'll click and then you can pull down and it comes right out okay so here is the other side went ahead and popped it off as you can here's what I was talking about with the tail if I can get it to focus so as you can see and then you'll use the uh, pliers to get a hold of the wings of the clip to remove them so as you can see, I've been able to utilize the, uh, the tool to pull these off, to unclip them from the top. I don't even think I need to completely remove them, just because I need to drop the headliner, not completely remove it. Some other pieces that you'll have to remove are these little plastic pins. There's three at the very rear of the hatch, and then there's two on that little hump over there. I pulled off those two already, but the front will probably vary if you have a sunroof on your RAV4. But with these, it's pretty simple. Just wedge this in here. All right, guys, so a little bit of a status update on this headliner takedown. I was able to get myself enough space to be able to make a little bit of progress on removing the adventure rail. I was able to kind of deduce this from checking it out yesterday. But around here, there's two bolts that go down into the, into the cab. Uh, they're held on with two of these, one each. Uh, these, are, these are 12 millimeter nuts. I don't know, let me see if I can get you guys a view in there. So guys, some breaking news. I made some progress. I got this one side of the rail off. So let me show you what this looks like. As you can see, there's two bolts 
there's four uh, there's two sets of bolts four all together there's two up front just to give you kind of an idea of where it is at the front so that you know uh, approximately where you should be uh, trying to get access to here is where the uh, the little handle things are in relation to where those bolts are and then for the rear about the same spot to around where the uh, these little ha handles are um, and there's two right here and as you see from there there's a, a little clip on the end and I think it was one on the rear and a couple in the middle and it just pops right off so finally the I got one of the rails off I'm gonna go back upstairs grab one side of the princey rack and see if I can uh, make sure that the holes fit before I go any further so lining it up now it looks like there's one two three four extra holes in the adventure gutters than the regular rav4 so we're gonna have to patch those holes so that um water doesn't leak but otherwise the actual holes to mount the prints we look like they line up so it's a very good sign so to use these plus nuts You'll get one of these brass fittings here. You'll have one of these long couplers and then the bolts. So let me take this one off. So the the bolts go straight through this uh, long nut and it doesn't thread into it. So it just free floats in there. But it does thread into the bottom of this plus nut. As you can see, there's threading down there. And what that'll do is this long nut will act as a spacer to keep the top spinning and then what it'll do is it'll pull this bottom piece upwards because of obviously the uh, tension and then it'll open up these wings and that will uh, keep the plus knot fastened into the roof so I'll go ahead and install a couple of these and I will check back in with you in a second so I have the first two plus knots installed on the front There's those two silicone applied like the instruction said um, I'm gonna go ahead and do these rear two and then those ones I will show you how I install the plus nut so that way you guys will be able to do this at home as well wanted to go ahead and show you this plus nut install so here's the actual plus nut itself apply some silicone to the base pop it in there so once you drop that in there you use the spacer and then the bolt into and the thread down and then you'll use uh, in this instance it's a uh, one half wrench down here and then a 716 socket up here to tighten it. And once, that, once that's secured, you'll go ahead and take the bolt off uh, going in the first direction. And the plus nut will stay in place. And now you have an installed plus nut. Okay guys, after a few hours of going at this, I've got almost all 10 of these plus nuts in. Uh, I have one left. This one is the rearmost plus nut. And for this particular hole, it was the one that was holding a, uh, a clip in. It's not the proper diameter, so that you have to drill it out to a 3 8 inch hole. For this, I'm using a step bit. And to clean off some of the loose metal shavings, I'm using a little magnet to clear off the channel and then I'll go ahead and install that plus nut. And hopefully from there, it's just a matter of putting the slats in and put everything back together and we'll be able to see what this Prince Hugh rack looks like on this 2019 RAV4 adventure. I'll see you guys in a second. So there it is, installed with some silicone. Uh, from here, just like I did with all the rest, I'm gonna add uh, some more silicone up top and then press the spacer onto it. All right guys, so I am mounting the roof rack on now, the rails anyway. I did this a little bit different than everyone else had done it online. I just did the side rails first and then I'm going to go ahead and install the crossbars versus building it on the ground and then bring it up here. Just because since I'm by myself, I didn't want to risk dropping it and scratching anything up. So I'll go ahead and tighten these all down and then I'll start installing the crossbars and hopefully from there it's done. I will check back in with you guys in a second, especially since this battery is dying. 
What's up everybody, day three of this install weekend. When I left you guys last, uh, sun was going down, but I went ahead and installed the, the rest of the Prince rack while I had the light. Basically from where I left you last, you can just follow the Prince instructions and just mount it. The difficult stuff was the stuff that we covered earlier in the day of dropping the headliner and getting access to removing the uh, roof rail on the 2019 RAV4 Adventures and the 2020 Adventures and TRD. The rack is now installed, so I want you guys to check this out. It looks awesome. Let me do. Uh, let me throw you guys into a quick montage of some of the sights of this thing. One thing I wanted to point out with this Prince Hoo rack, especially if you own the Adventure or the TRD off-road model of the RAV4, out of the box, it's not going to be a watertight install. You can see there's a couple holes left in the roof. I think there's five all together on each end. From the very rearmost mounting point, there's one about three inches above there, and then past this one, there's one over here, and then there's one up at the very front. And that's the same on both sides. What I went ahead and did was I ordered, I believe they're quarter inch plugs from Amazon. I'll put those in the description below as well. And I plan on siliconing those into the holes and hopefully that'll provide a watertight seal. I went ahead and reached out to Prince and let them know about the situation, but today is Sunday, so uh, I don't anticipate on hearing anything from them until tomorrow. If there are any updates regarding that before this video goes out, then I'll make sure I include all of that. Otherwise, super easy install. The most difficult part was definitely figuring out how to drop the headliner and doing it blind since I take it I'm the first that did this. Hopefully my trials and tribulations of dropping this headliner is a benefit to you guys and you're able to figure out how to drop this a lot easier than I did. And then also cut down your installation time from I think I was working on this for at least six hours overall to just a couple hours.